Hey guys, Kill Stokes here. Welcome back to the Trading Coach Podcast. I've got a video episode for you. So if you guys are watching on YouTube or listening on Spotify, you have the luxury of seeing me, which I think is a good thing. Maybe, maybe not. I'll let you be the judge of that. Don't, if it's not, don't tell me. If it is, like, yeah, give me comments and say, yeah, Kill, we love watching you. That's weird. Um, but anyway, what we're going to talk about today is going to be my trading routine, my trading schedule, how it's changed over the years, and how it's helped me on my pursuit of happiness. Now, something that would make me very happy is if you take a second, leave this podcast a rating or review, just click five stars, four stars, whatever you think I deserve. I know it doesn't seem like much, but it goes a massive way in helping this show grow and bumping us up the rankings so that we could be the best podcast ever, and that just would be cool. So do it if you feel uh, like you want to or if I deserve it. So I had a moment today, right? It's around lunchtime. It's about 1230. I'm sitting on the couch watching the Champions League draw, right? For you guys that aren't sports nerds, the Champions League is basically a soccer league made up of the best teams in Europe. And today was like the big fancy draw where they have these balls and this computer with this crazy algorithm. And they basically figure out who plays who, but they do it over this like hour long session. And I remember I'm sitting there about a half an hour in. I'm like, Akil, what am I doing? Like, why am I sitting here? Why have I been sitting here for the last half an hour watching this when I can easily just go on my computer a little bit later in the day, click a button, and it tells me everything that I've been waiting for this entire time? And my answer was, because I'm having this dialogue with myself, right, is because I can. And it was a powerful moment. And I don't mean this in a braggadocious way at all, but if you understand me, understand that my pursuit in trading has gone first from financial freedom uh, to freedom of time as I learned what was more important and shifted my priorities around that. And everything that I've done in my trading and in my life as far as like becoming more productive, becoming more efficient, has been done in order to increase how much free time I have. My mentor uh, once told me this, right? I didn't understand at the time, but it makes perfect sense. This is Jason Stapleton. He said, I want to, you know, my goal is to be in a position where I only have to do the things that I want to do. Meaning that if I don't want to mail something out, I don't have to. If I don't want to pump gas into my car, I don't have to. And at the time, I'm a younger trader. I'm, I'm, I come from a background of like, you know, grinding it out and doing everything me, like, you know, and not asking anyone for help. I'm like, that's ridiculous. Like, I'm always going to want to do everything myself. And fast forward years, years later, and it hit me like he was 100% right. He didn't literally mean like he's not going to pump his own gas, but he meant that he had the option. He had the choice. And in this moment, I had the choice to be sitting there on the couch, stuffing my face, watching Cristiano Ronaldo push a button that told me who was playing who. I had no stake in the game. I'm an Everton fan. And if you're not a sports fan, they're really bad. Um, and we're probably never going to be in the Champions League. Um, so I have no like personal stake in it. I'm just watching because I could. And it made me think about the differences in my trading routine from back when to now. So I want to start off with the former. I want to talk to you about what my trading routine was back in. I'm trying to remember when I wrote this article. The magazine, you could tell it was old because I wrote it for a magazine and magazines no longer exist. Um, but it had to be probably about a decade ago. Um, and I'll try to walk through it as quickly as possible, but it was pretty much like this, right? I would wake up 5.30. This would be my double wake up. So this is where I would wake up, hop out of bed. I wouldn't go straight to my charts. I always did the double wake up where I wanted to do stuff to kind of get going, right? I've always found that my mind wakes up after my body. So my body's like, yeah, let's go. My mind's like, right? So when I would jump right into the charts, I would make mistakes. Everything would be cloudy. My judgment wouldn't be good enough yet. So I would do yoga. I would stretch emails, whatever it may be um, for about a half an hour when I wake up. And that's something I still do to this day. Um, I would start my top-down analysis um, about 6 o'clock. Um, so this would be day trading and swing trading because I was day trading at the time. So I would do all my analysis for the higher time frames, what I needed to watch and set up for the day. Then I would do all my lower time frame analysis as well, what I need to pay attention to a few hours from now when my day trading day began. And that would, that would be pretty much from like 6 to 7. So it would take me like an hour of that. 
Um, seven, eight, uh, seven o'clock, I do mental prep. So this is breakfast. I take a walk around the neighborhood. I do some yoga, something to kind of get away from the charts and, and kind of refresh my mind. That way I'm not kind of tired and fatigued going into my day trading day. Keep in mind, day trading day was kind of like going into a battle, right? It was like, you know, I'm, I'm jumping into the arena where everything is active. So like, you gotta be ready. If you're fatigued or you're one step behind because everything moves so fast, you're gonna miss out. So I want to give myself enough time to prep for that. And then um, at eight o'clock, my active day trading day would begin. I would run a live trading room and that would go from about eight to 11. After that, I would do a mental reset. This is where I'd go off and uh, depending on the day it was, I'd go for a bike ride, a workout, something to kind of get my anger out, just kind of, again, step away from the chart so I can come back later and reset. Um, the middle of the day would be pretty much open. This is where my free time would be, probably after like, you know, 12 o'clock, I guess like that. Um, I would do probably like two hours of work stuff, work stuff for the business. Um, I didn't have a podcast back then, but whatever I'm working on, it could be back testing, could be something with my trading as well, messing with clients, um, but probably two hours of work stuff sometime in there. And then later at night, usually around 7 p.m., I would do my nightly analysis. So this was my uh, my swing trading prep to get ready for the night, getting order, orders on, stops moved, anything like that. Um, set up my trading in case overnight um, trades occurred. And then I'd go to bed usually like uh, family time all in between there, but I'd go to bed like 1030 and reset the day. And if you're watching this, I'll, I'll probably try to overlay like some type of mediocre graphic to kind of give you a visual. But here was what my ratios were, right? So about 29% of my day was sleep. I don't know what the exact ratio we want for sleep is um, as far as percentages go, but I was getting about seven hours of sleep, which is fine. Um, now, this was when I had a kid, so or a younger kid, so it really wasn't seven hours, but seven hours that were dedicated to sleep a night is what I, I typically average. Um, keep in mind, I'm an athlete, so eight to 10 is what I need to get to be kind of in tip top um, athletic shape. Um, I never get 10, but seven is was really good. About 38% of my day was spent on work, and about 33% of my day was spent on free time. So my goal over the last decade or so was to really boost some of these ratios up and drop the others, right? So I did wanna get a little bit more sleep. I wanted to boost that up. I did want to get a lot more free time. I wanted to boost that up. And well, something's gotta take a hit, that is work. And I'll kind of walk you through how my routine has changed. Now, again, some things have changed in my trading as well. I no longer day trade. And this was the whole reason for stopping day trade. It was, I don't wanna call it a time suck because it made good money, but it, it was something that got in the way of more freedom and the money that was made from day trading didn't necessarily amount or didn't necessarily equal the freedom that I would get from it. And I put this tweet out the other day. I was, I was, uh, I, I got back from a meeting with some new students um, and I was talking to them about what happiness actually is and that you know, in my pursuit of happiness, I went from money, 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 being the only thing that mattered to freedom, 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 freedom. And sometimes you have to sacrifice money for that. And I think there's a balance in that, right? I think you go from a period because, you know, you don't fulfill your needs. You don't feel happy until you reach a certain level of money. So there is a period in your life where you have to try to make as much money as you can. But then once you get to that level, right? Again, once your basic needs are fulfilled and you're no longer worried about getting kicked out the house or paying for food and all the stuff that you can do, then money doesn't bring the same type of happiness. And you start asking, well, I've bought this, I've bought that, I've bought this. These material things don't really make me any more money. But the thing that I can purchase that will or make me more uh, make me happy. The things that I can purchase that can give me more happiness is time, is freedom, is options. And that, that shift occurs, even if it means the sacrifice of making as much money as possible because you're already kind of floating at a good rate. So getting rid of day trading helped massively with that. Also becoming more efficient, more productive in my trading, my uh, you know not getting distracted by weird things on the internet. Um, just, you know, in general in my life, becoming a more productive person and a more efficient person has slowly taken hours away that were kind of being just, I don't know, just used for no reason and allowed me to use them in a, uh, a much more productive way, which eventually opened up time. So I'll kind of work, walk you through my, my new schedule now, right? So I still do the double wake up, right? Still hop out my bed, ready to go, but 
instead of waking up at 5.30, um, which did get a little annoying, even though I'm an early bird, it did get a little annoying, I now wake up 6.30, right? I've given my, and I do a natural wake up. I don't set an alarm or anything. Like sometimes I'll still wake up five if I feel like it, but I'll never pa uh, sleep past 6.30. So I do a nice natural wake up at 6.30, take about a half an hour to do non-trading related stuff. When I say that, like non-chart related stuff. So it could be answering emails, talking to clients. Um, this morning I was watching the um, uh, NVIDIA uh, earnings kind of, um, uh, some gossip on that, just to dig into some information about a potential play there. Um, and then seven o'clock, I start my top-down analysis. Now, here's the thing. In the past, my top-down analysis was an hour. Remember, it was from seven to, or from six to seven. Do you know how long my top-down analysis is? Now, I marked off 30 minutes on the little routine thing I wrote out, but honestly, it takes like 15 minutes. It takes like 15 minutes. Without the day trading, right? only swing trading and, and knowing exactly what pair is doing what, knowing exactly what I'm looking for, with the exception of some wild news that happened overnight, it's pretty just it's pretty much just adding on to analysis that was already there. And I always say, if you do a good job of analyzing the market, all you have to do is kind of add to it afterwards. You don't have to do kind of brand new analysis. So it honestly takes about 15 minutes to do my top down analysis in the morning. After that is still breakfast. Um, I have a little bit more time to eat breakfast, which I'm still trying to figure out. Um, this routine is pretty new to me. I'm still trying to figure out what to do with that extra time. So usually I, I work in some kind of like work there, do like a short record, record a podcast, talk to the clients on the tier one platform, something like that. Um, and then I start a live trading room, right? Um, still do my live trading room. It's a little bit shorter instead of three hours, about an hour and a half now, eight to 10 or eight to 9.30, depending on what's going on. And then I have my mental reset after that. And that's when I work out, right? So if you follow me on reels or I don't do them on shorts, but Instagram, you'll see me all the time where I'm at the track or I'm running somewhere or I'm biking somewhere, right? That is still health and fitness for me, which makes me happy, but it's also my mental reset to get away from the markets. Now, some of you are probably asking, well, like, how do you get away from the markets in the middle of the day? Aren't you a trader? And my answer is yes. Um, I shared a video of this on YouTube and it's supposed to be like some type of behind the scenes, a day in a life thing of a keel coming out at some point uh, by some, some friends of mine. But when you're a swing trader, when you're operating on the hourly and four hour time frame, there's a lot of time in between your trades. Again, you think about this, if price is coming down to a significant level and you require a three bar reversal, that is three hours before you can do anything, or even let's say price is down there, you need a two, bar, two more bars to complete it, higher, high, higher close. You have two hours, even on an hourly, before you can do anything. So that's plenty of time to look at something at 9.30, be like, hey, I need two more bars, that means I can't have an entry until 11, sneak my workout in from 9.30 to 10.30, get back 10.45, you know, scrub the pits a little bit, get the beard all nice, and then come back in the market and still execute my trade. In many cases, a lot of my trades are coming off to four hours, so that adds even more time. So it doesn't make a lot of sense until you do it, but as you trade the lower or the higher time frames, there's a lot more time in between if you're organized. If you're not organized, you're scrambling. If you're organized, you know exactly what to do and you can even set alerts for when things are in those dangerous spots. Um, not to mention trading opportunities where you just have your orders on, limit orders on already for like advanced patterns, uh, for example. So. It's not as weird as it seems, right? Kind of the myth is out there is that we got to be in front of our charts all the time. Not true. Um, so I do my mental reset at, and then pretty much after that, the rest of the day is mine, right? I sit on the couch and watch Champions League draws, but I usually do about an hour and a half, two hours of like work. So that's like, again, podcast recording, making a video. Um, at the same time, I'm on the platform talking to traders. Um, it could be continued education, if it, depending on the time of the year. Um, it could be track practice, right? Uh, depending on the time of the year as well. And then I still do about another 15 minute nightly prep once the kids are uh, going to bed, once my wife is putting the bed or after I put in the bed, 15 minutes of nightly prep to kind of get on what I need to get on. In the most case, those things are on already throughout the day. And then my Day is done, 10.30, it's bedtime. We watch usually some type of show. We're watching Evil right now, just got done, uh, Presumed Innocent, good one. Won't spoil it for you, but you'll never see it coming. Um, and then it's bedtime. So if you look at the ratios, remember the first situation was sleep 29, work 38, free time 33. I was able to boost that from sleep from 29 to 33. I was able to boost free time from, or let's do this, I was able to reduce work from 38 to 17, so I, I cut that by more than half. I, I cut out 
more than half of the hours that I work, right? It's crazy, um, yet get the same result. Um, and that half that I stole from work, that now becomes free time. I was able to take my free time, right, from 33 to 50%. 50% of my day, I can do whatever I want. And that is happiness. So I say this not to like brag, you guys know me better than that by now, um, but hopefully to inspire, to educate as far as what a routine looks like as a swing trader, but also to inspire you because guess what? I did not start like this. I started off, what? working 18 hours a day doing three jobs, maybe not 18 hours a day, maybe like 15 hours a day working three jobs. And I went to a place where I was able to find something that would eventually allow, allow me to have freedom. At the beginning of that journey, I didn't have a lot of freedom because I was spending like 12 hours a day studying the markets, trying to get good. I spent a lot of time being bad. And then once I got good, I spent a lot of time working on, you know, continuing to get better to building my business, whether it was managing money, whether it was coaching. And then after time, right, and, and, and all this stuff kind of, this is the journey you have to go on. After time, I was able to transition and put myself in a position slowly where I can slowly reduce work, I can slowly increase sleep, and more importantly, slowly increase that free time. And when you're writing out your goals, I always advise writing out you know, one-year goal, five-year goal, 10-year goal. When you write those big picture goals, why not? Hope you enjoyed the podcast. Remember, if you're interested in learning how to trade, check us out at www.tier1trading.com and also make sure you subscribe to the Trading Coach Podcast. Three new episodes each and every week about all types of weird trading related topics, but you guys seem to like them, so I keep doing them. All right, until next time, plan your trade, trade your plan. Take care.